Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do Frank Frazetta's Tales of the Science Fantasy number one by Opus Comics with the Frank Frazetta cover. So yeah, let's dive in and see if it's actually good. It's made by uh, Denton J. Tipton and Miguel Angela Ruiz and a lot of, you know, other people, including Sarah Frazetta. Uh, so when I was reading this, I read it twice to, to get a better understanding. Not that the um, um, story is very complex, it's more semi-confusing. Um, I'm going to explain. So there is a dictator in the jungle and, uh, and we see all these people here and we have a dictator and his name is Juice and um, it says that everything here what you are seeing belongs to the state and the state belongs to Juice. Okay and um, so Juice uh, well it basically says and right up until it didn't so that's how he ended, spoiler, it's on the cover. And uh, so Juice here a couple of days ago is uh, having a challenger. And um, so they're having a fight. And it seems that these are people are not very um, happy with the with Juice. And they want to kill him many, many times over. Uh, he's been hit in the gut or in the side. But then, you know, he uh, collects himself and kills well, well, the person that, you know, this guy, <laughs> I'm not sure why I blind. Um, so later in the chambers, he's being comforted by his uh, I don't know, spouse, concubine, wife, whatever. And, um, and she says, um, these challenges, why keep it, uh, why keep that ritual alive? As the tides of the war have turned against the state, that tradition become the only thing left supporting the legitimacy of my power. And, um, she had, and he says without it, he would be assassinated a long time ago. But uh, she will, uh, you know, says, hey, why don't you drop it all and, and come to, to my place? And it, I don't know, she has some kind of a tribe and, and um, they will support him because it seems that he has a lot of enemies within. Um, but he also talks about war all the time. And I thought to myself, but who are you at war with? I mean, is it people from the inside? Is it outside threats? I'm going to take a sip of water, guys. So just give me a second. <sighs> Tastes good. Anyway. So, then we see, I don't know, generals, I guess. And he says, Juice must not be allowed to escape and rebuild. The coward is fleeing north with his personal guard of 500 brute elite warriors. We expect him to try crossing the Lapis Mountains to the west. And uh, basically, he says, uh, they are saying, hey, you need to uh, stop him. Dismissed. So basically, more the story is about these three guys, which I didn't expect. I expect, you know, you know, from the dictator's eyes. And I thought it was amusing. It was amusing to me that we see his assassins or would-be assassins. And they, um, you know, get, got some dialogue. And I mean, this guy says, hey, it's going to, I'm going to miss this war. The indiscriminating killing was my favorite. And uh, the other say, well, there will be another war coming soon, etc. And the other one says, well, I'm glad you, you know, give my life to the state, etc., etc., etc. So there's some nice dialogue here. Um, and then we go back to Deuce, who just, I don't know, flees anyway, which... That was my first question. I mean, you are in power. Why are you, why are you fleeing? For what? I mean, um, is it that the enemy is on your your on your forefront of your castle or you know in, in your land? Are you losing? Nothing is explained, um, and that's my main gripe. I mean, he's he's getting angry all the time, but then we see bits of pieces of what happened. For instance. Um, um, where we just start. Well, basically, his, his girl says, hey, we will regroup and we restart. And he says, we? Haven't you forgotten your place? And she, she quickly retracts that and says, I'm here where I should be, Juice, right behind you all the way. That's what the treacherous Falco says. So these are the Falco, Falconians, I guess. And along with Sarinians, um, they, I believe they are the enemy, according to him. And, uh, well, they are, I believe, at war with him, but we don't see it. 
I'm just guessing, and it seems that he is, I don't know, enslaving these people, like a good dictator, but then this is happening. I mean, this looks good. I'm really impressed with this. This is, looks exciting, you know, from the flames, these assassins comes, or maybe this is Deuce himself, I'm not entirely sure. So he is, you know, getting out of the, 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 the cargo or the van or whatever, caravan, and, and the woman says, well, I didn't expect him to help me up, but maybe check if I was alive. Guess I just have to fend for myself, like always. And while well, she's defending themselves from traitors, what looks great. And then um, a trio, and I thought it was the other trio. Uh, so Falco's defending himself and killing these people. And she saves him from this assassin, the sniper. And, um, and then we go back to our trio. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. So those are other people from the same group that wants to kill him or something like I said it's it's a little bit unclear everything so this big guy says we are right behind use and you have to stop us and you have to stop to help civilians shut it nor or Noah whatever his name is you got um you got to gut a few more of these Sarenians right so okay but are these the Bad guys? Are these Serenians attacking the population? What? You know, it's, it's a little bit, uh, very unclear. So this this archer is boasting that that these peasants will spread folk tales and, and uh, how he stopped here to help before going to capture Deuce. He will be a legend. And, well, and Kalmarad says, Sykes, you may have just missed your shot at being a legend, Godfrey. Yeah, so there's some, some cool banter between them. And then um, they're looking at the place where, uh, you know, the, the explosion happened. And it seems that, I don't know, these 500 soldiers, it doesn't look like 500 soldiers are being captured by, or, or maybe the other way around. It seems that the assassin's been captured by the soldiers, one of the 500. Like I said, it's not clear because they all wear the same clothes. Uh, there's no clear um, indication who is the good and the bad guy. So they are figuring out where... Um, where uh, Deuce is going, and um, he says he's taking the train. That's the most obvious option. But he would also know that. But would he care? He's not afraid for a fight. Or he is afraid and getting tired and desperate. He's taking the train. Um, all right. And then he's indeed on a train, and the train looks pretty ugly, in my opinion. I must say, when it comes to art, it looks a little bit... Yeah, meh. It's not that fantastic. It's not really that bad. It depends on your taste on your taste of, of art, uh, but I'm not really feeling this this art style. It's not it's not bad or something, and then the colors is, is, is not bad either, but it's all a little bit all in the middle, at least as, you know, the artist has, you know, making effort to do, put in some detail here and there. And, um, all right, and then he talks about mutiny, about his personal guard. Um, so he says... Um, I can't believe we're taking a train. Too obvious. They will think that as well and focus their search elsewhere. But you train them to expect the unexpected. I also train them to follow me in battle. And you saw what happened back there. You need my personal god. And he says that you know he's rewarding, rewarding uh, his crew and is taking care of his warriors. And he says, why would they turn on me? Well, maybe they are fed up because you know you are raging war all the time and they're getting hurt guessing from what I'm seeing here. And she says, they were poisoned. Veldina will not be poisoned against you. My people are immune to such venom. So she is then Veldinian or something? Like I said, it's, it's so unclear everything. Um, anyway, so he looks with her with suspicion still, which I don't know why. I mean, she's been here along the way. So our, our three... Um, I'm not sure if they're heroes or assassins, but... I'm not sure how to call them. Um, so uh, they're debating if he's, you know, taking the train or not. So he's here at the train station. And uh, one of them says, none of them will talk to us. True glue. Jesus. True glue. They just want to be done with this war. And then this guy comes and he says, yes. And uh, so he explains that he saw um, Juice on the train, and he says, well, it's, it's his face is everywhere. Well, to me, they all look the same, to be honest, a little bit. And um, and then this, this, this civilian says, 
Too bad about those Cyrenian occupiers, huh? Here they were executed in front of the entire village. Wait a minute. Weren't they just the assassins? But now they are executed? And eh, this is some foul play here. Poor devils. Regret I wasn't there to see it. See what I mean? World Trevor amongst the peasants. And then, well, it seems that Deuce was here. So he's fleeing. And then this, this become a little bit weird. So this is happening. So the woman says, well, Travis, fast among peasants. You would know, eh? Only, worse, uh, only thing worse than peasants is the Cyrenians. Am I that terrible? Wait a minute. That confused me a lot. So coming back to that is a little bit later. She is not Cyrenian. The Cyrenian are these fish people that were executed, right? So I'm not sure where this dialogue comes from. Because, so going back into the past, he asked, would you do to my tribe what you did to the Serenian Jews? Uh, an act that started this war in the first place. So yeah, it seems that the Serenians are being, these are fish people, underwater people, then being poisoned. So I guess Jews is raging war against the Serenians. But we don't see that. We we're just being told. The only thing that I see here in this comic that this these people are being butchered all the time. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit weird. And then he does this. And she says, Do you are, are you seriously picking a fight with me right now? Yes, makes this easier. Why, do, why are you doing that? Aren't you fleeing with her to a safe place? Why are you trying to kill her in the open? She has done nothing wrong. And not according to what I've seen in this comic. So again, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. So then this is happening. So the, our, well, let's call our protagonist <laughs> are here. And they are, you know, they're attacking uh, Deuce. Uh, but Deuce is, you know, he's a good warrior. And uh, he said, long live the state. I am the state. You were the state. Yeah, great dialogue, dude. So he dives into water to escape. But then, again, weird stuff is happening. So this would have been another masterful escape for Deuce, if not for his own cruelty. So there's an arrow, arrow um, hitting the water, and it's hitting him in the face. And then he goes out. Rawr! So are you just in pain, or are you just losing your air when hit, and now you need to, you know, breathe? It's... it's I don't know. It's, I cannot. I, what, what is it? Are you in pain or not? Um, but then this guy comes in and clobbers him. So he's been captured and he's being doing the walk of shame and then he's being crucified, um, you know, against this crucifixion thing, thing, thing here. And um, so the rest played out pretty much as you imagine it would. The tyrant that ruled with violence was treated in kind and came to a violent end. That's the funny thing about fascism, though. It doesn't die with its figurehead. I cannot stand the word fascism anymore because it lost all meaning, just like all the other buzzwords. I mean, if you have an opinion somewhere, then you are being labeled. And, and somebody, certain person don't like your opinion, then you, then you are fascist, you know? Although you're just having an opinion. It's crazy. It's crazy. So we have Mothman here. There's also a Frank Frazetta creation. And then, I don't know, he's been jailed and tortured. So it seems that the state is being taken over by this woman. And um, so coming back to this last sentence, it lies dormant until, the, until, the, until it gathers enough strength for a proper resurrection and a new savior. So yeah, the whole uh, being a dictator is going to continue, but under a new regime, if you will. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the book. So I believe this, um, what I've known, this is some kind of a um, anthology thing. So I'm thankful that we not continue this particular series into the next one, because although I do not mind this comic, it's not something that I'm interested in. I just picked it up because I found, hey, listen, this is a Frank Frazetta, it's Opus, it's, it's you know, um, maybe a cool story, who knows, and... Uh, yeah, I was not disappointed, but I was not so not also excited, if you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, we'll leave it at that here. Guys, let me know what you think about it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.